Okay, I can't uh, see if people can hear me or not, but my name is Ms. Majid. I am a consultant gynecologist at Guys in St. Thomas's Hospital, London. Uh, I, I I'm, thank you very much for inviting me to present my data on uh, this topic of excisional treatment of cervical neoplasia uh, under local anesthesia versus general anesthesia. Guys in St. Thomas's Hospital has the largest colposcopy unit in United Kingdom and in Europe. We have a well uh, established screening program which uh, identifies women with precancerous cells and early cancer. So we can do sort of conservative or fertility sparing treatment. Uh, cervical cancer is a major global issue. There are half a million women who are diagnosed with cancer. They are advanced cancer in, in third world countries and uh, a quarter of a million women die of cancer, which is similar to maternal mortality worldwide. So it is a huge health problem. So we know that the cervical we know that about the natural history of the disease that it is caused by human papilloma virus, uh, which and we know quite a lot about the uh, uh, we know quite a lot about the pre-cancerous uh, stages and natural history of disease. So this is the animation of the progression of cervical disease after HPV infection. So HPV enters the basement membrane and it can leads to changes that uh, which can be histologically CIN1, which is pre-cancer, CIN2 and CIN3 are a high grade disease. According to WHO, they're two precursors of cervical cancer. So they um, it should be treated by any excisional procedure before it develops into cancer. However, if CIN2 in younger women, uh, it can regress. So because of the childbearing issues and weakness of the cervix, uh, they can have more conservative approach. I'm just trying to get my slides to move. So um, in United Kingdom from 1st of December, 2019, we have moved on to primary HPV screening. Uh, so first, uh, if somebody uh, tests positive for the HPV, then we do the cytology test. This is a normal uh, cytology with cytoplasmic nuclear of one into uh, 10. And this is what the epithelium looks like. If it is low grade, mild dyskaryosis, and when they come to colposcopy, we take a biopsy, it looks like CIN1, it involves one third of the epithelium. If it is high grade, then it can go, cytoplasmic ratio can go from 50 to 70%, and then comes the invasive cancer. So these one, and, uh, and um, microinvasive cancer is the area where we do treatment with LEDs. Uh, biopsies. So treatment modalities could be excision, which is uh, which we use in our unit is less procedure, but we can do needle excision, which could be more precise, or knife cone, which is more aggressive, or laser coneization. The benefit of excision is that it gives us a histological diagnosis. It tells us about the involvement of margins, and we know if margins are involved, the recurrence rate is higher. But it causes, the downsides are that it causes weakness of the cervix in girls of the reproductive age. So uh, we have to be careful. In case of ablation, there are heat treatment, cold coagulation is a misnomer or laser ablation. The curving learning curve for leads and leads is quite simple. For laser, it's much deeper, but it is not associated with so much with cervical weakness in terms of preterm labor 
or mid trimester miscarriage. So uh, we have a very uh, robust screening program. Before we sent women for uh, assessment in colposcopy, we sent them a leaflet that they are going to have a colposcopy and they're going to, if it's high grade, like specially severe, we send them this leaflet about large excision. So they are prepared as you know, with COVID especially, there is a backlog. So we uh, try to give them as much information as possible. And data and studies have suggested that the weakness, uh, the anxiety prior to the uh, LEDs procedure is similar to that of um, laparotomy. So we have to support our women, so it's acceptable to them. So aims of this study was to assess the performance of LEDs treatment of transformation zones under local anesthetic or general anesthetic. So this is how we do it. This is the cervix. Uh, after making women comfortable, we can go side to side or from front to back to remove the abnormal area. So objectives of this study was to look at the rates, the criteria, completeness of excision, cure rates of excisional treatment under local anesthetic versus general anesthetic uh, by means of test of cure, which is uh, HPV test and cervical smear after treatment. So the study design and methodology was that it is um, a retrospective observational study over 12 months period, just uh, before the COVID started, all cases uh, who had led treatment in guys in St. Thomas's Hospital between 1st of January 2019 to 31st of December 2019 were included. We have a very robust data system, which is called Viewpoint, and we all our data which is collected uh, is sent directly via a system called CIRES to Quality Assurance Center, and then it is collected nationally. We also used other systems like electric, electronic patient records to get the histology and cytology reserve. After six, months, six to eight months, we did the test of cure to evaluate the success of the treatment. So how did we decide which patients are going to have local anesthetic and who's going to have general anesthetic? It's very much patient's choice to some extent. Uh, some patients, they may have a small lesion, but they are very frightened and are very uncomfortable. Colposcopy is quite uncomfortable for some uh, women being in lithotomy positions makes them feel far less. So uh, it's a choice, whatever they, they decide. Then it depends on the grade of lesion, uh, whether it's uh, uh, deeper and the size of the lesion, type of transformation zone, if it involving um, uh, the whole of the cervix or going to the vagina, uh, we likely to have incomplete excision and patients would be very uncomfortable. So we, uh, the clinician can decide to do it under GA and if the access is uh, not very good, if there are fibroids, anatomy is distorted. And also if they're having additional general anesthetic procedures like transcervical resection of fibroid, hysteroscopy, a resection of polyp, laparoscopy, excision of vulval vaginal lesions. So in 2019, uh, we had about nearly 9,000 appointments, about 6,000 women, women attended our unit, and 5.6%, that is three, 327, had the LEDs procedure. 67% of the procedures were under local anesthetics. And of these, only eight patients, which is 7.4%, uh, uh, were uh, under uh, C entry, that is on their first appointment, despite giving them all the information prior to their assessment that they didn't find it very suitable. So only 7.4% had C entry. 108, about 33% had it under general anesthetic. So if you look at the referral criteria, so most common who had treatment 
uh, severe dyscariosis, where the correlation between cytology and histology is very good, 84%. Then they, the next common group was mild dyscariosis, and it seems moderate and borderline are sort of in between. The, sometimes cytopathologists can't decide how high grade they are, uh, but they were on low side. Severe invasive definitely needs treatment. Glandular also needs treatment. And there are clinical indications like if, uh, which could be urgent or if they could be non-urgent, whether if there, there is a suspicious looking cervix or there is a postcoital bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding. That's not so common. So when we did the treatment, we found majority of the patient has CIN3, uh, which we would expect, and that is good quality of our service. The next common was CIN2. Again, that's um, acceptable, but few patients had CIN1, few had normal or HPV. And we, if, when there are discrepancy, we discuss it in our multidisciplinary team meetings with the cytopathologist and histopathologist. And it could be when the punch biopsy were taken before they were scheduled for procedure, there was high grade abnormality, CIN2 or CIN3, but we may have removed that abnormality with the punch biopsy. But we review all patients because of the comorbidity associated with LAX procedure. There were uh, about four or five patients who had um, high-grade glandular lesion and cancers. So if you look, uh, compare the um, data under local anesthetic versus general anesthetic, then uh, 219 were under local anesthetic, 108 were under general anesthetic, and because now, especially in Western world, women are deferring their childbearing age. It used to be early 20s, then it went to late 20s. And now, um, because women are following careers, so it, it is now more in 30s. So as you can see, under local anesthetic, average age was 32. In general anesthetic, it was 34. And if you look at the volumes, this is very interesting that um, under local anesthetics, we are um, removing a small volume uh, disease and under general anesthetic, and that's why they're having treatment because they've got larger lesion. It's almost double to about uh, 4,284 cubic millimeters. Also, depth is interesting that in local anesthetic, it's much shallower as compared to general anesthetic where patient is more um, sort of in a relaxed environment, we can go deeper. There is a not that uh, tone present when women are awake. And uh, we were achieving complete excision under local anesthetic, which is 65%, versus general anesthetic, which is 47%. Of course, they are larger lesions, they're extending to vagina. And if you look at the incomplete excision, it's more on the ectocervix that is in a local anesthetic compared to general anesthetic. And because if they're <coughs> coming to vagina uh, or, or to especially to the bladder in front and posterior rectum, uh, they are still uh, ectocervix is involved. Endocervix is more under local anesthetic compared to general anesthetic. Lateral margins are <coughs> similar. Uh, it is important if we can try and remove the abnormality in one go. Uh, and in under local anesthetic is 97%, under GA is 68% because uh, trying not to damage uh, the surrounding tissue like bladder and rectum. So multiple samples are 3% in local anesthetic, 32% under general anesthetic. So coming test of cure, all women after six to eight months have um, a test. And now we moved on to HPV. Uh, 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 after 2019, we were testing HPV first. So we found that um, majority of the women in both of the um, local anesthetic and general anesthetic were HPV negatives, which is 85%, which shows the good success rates with this procedure. Um, HPV positive, cytology negative, 
it was about 8% under local anesthetic, 6.5% under general anesthetic, uh, and uh, where there were abnormalities both, or which we can sort of say failure rate, 5% under local, 7.5% under general anesthetic, and complete failure in local anesthetic when the woman had a high grade abnormality, she had uh, uh, repeat treatment. But the, the problem with this is that especially in London, we have a very mobile uh, population. They do not tend to stay uh, in the uh, same area. They uh, move around. We have a 10 million population. Uh, so the DNA rate of who are not compliant was about 12% uh, and the general anesthetic 16%. So just in conclusion, um, let's and leave uh, performance under local anesthetic is acceptable to majority of the women. Uh, it's just that we need to have right environment, support, information, and it is as effective as under general anesthetic, 85% cure rate. Choice of anesthesia is influenced by national standards. Patients always have a choice, even if they start having treatment under local anesthetic, they can uh, change their mind and we can book them for general anesthetic, depends on colposcopy assessment. And if there are discrepancies, we don't want to cause any harm to any patients. We have the facility of discussing them in multidisciplinary team meeting and making the recommendation, then it's patient's choice what they want to do. Hence, uh, let's is an appropriate, with appropriate analgesia is likely to remain the treatment modality for foreseeable future. At the moment, we don't have any medical treatment like we know for primary prevention, we have HPV a vaccine. At the moment, trials are going, there is no medication or no a medication like in case of HIV, which can give orally or any cream we can apply locally. So that's why excisional treatments are likely to stay. So thank you very much. If you have any uh, question, I'll be delighted to answer.